Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wybot, and welcome to the second wing of the uh, Hellfire Citadel, the Halls of Blood. So, we're uh, going to get right into it here with our first boss, which is the Hellfire Council, which consists of a familiar face, Gertog Bloodboil. Some of you may remember him from years and years and years ago in Black Temple. He is joined by a corrupted blade master. Jubithos, and also Dia Dark Whisper. So they are respectively, for those of you who care about the lore, which, not really necessary here, but interesting anyway. Gertog is a Bleeding Hallow Berserker guy, and now he is a uh, Bell Corrupted Hulk, and Blade Master uh, Jubithos is a corrupted member of the Burning Blade. And Dia Dark Whisper is a member of the Shadow Moon Clan, who is... I think she's still mostly uh, doing the Void stuff that the Shadow Moon Clan does. So anyway, that is it for the lores. Let's get into the fight here. As a nice little change here, I figured I would just show you guys, or I would just explain to you guys, uh, the LFR version of the uh, guide over on icyveins.com. So please go check it out if you want the uh, text version of this guide. So, uh, I'll tell you what the tanks have to worry about, which, according to this guide, is just one fucking thing. One or two fucking things. Uh, that and kill order. So, let's get started here. Tank all the bosses close together, is what they say. Uh-huh. Um, I actually believe that you're not supposed to do that. I think you're, uh, I think what I'm doing here is correct, where I'm tanking, uh, Dia in one area, and then, uh, Gortog and uh, Dubithos are uh, over elsewhere. I think that might actually be higher difficulties uh, question though. So basically one tank takes Dia, I took Dia, the other tank took Gortog and uh, Blade Mask and Jubithos. Wow, that's an interesting name there, Jubithos. Uh, so you should use your uh, defensive cooldowns, so uh, short ones like um, the... Um, Divine protection there, and uh, during Nightmare Visage, so when she transforms into the giant void creature, use your defensive cooldowns. That's what tanks need to worry about. Healers! Use cooldowns when bosses get under 30%, and finally, the uh, kill order itself here, melee and range DPS, that uh, what they need to worry about is they need to make sure that Gortog goes down first, Blade Master Jubithos goes down second, and finally Dia Dark Whisperer goes down third. And the reason for that, I will get into that in the more detailed guide here for uh, Normal and Above. So let's just skip ahead here. So, uh, yeah, basically, Dia, first time I ever did this, I was a DPS and we wiped horribly. We messed up the kill order pretty badly, so. Uh, what happens here is, uh, let's see here, there is an ability once they get a little lower down. The mark of the necromancer is a shadow dot that occasionally is used throughout the fight. Visage, Void Haze. So Void Haze is what I was concerned about. They have stacking uh, debuffs or stacking buffs if they're too close to one another. That apparently is not the case in LFR, so I was just working under the assumption that it is. Uh, you want to uh, make sure that you handle the bosses in a certain order, as I said before. Once they get to less than 30% health, get a new ability, which is pretty bad. Uh, the guide here strongly recommends uh, killing Gurtog first, because even though his uh, sub-30% ability, Tainted Blood, persists after he dies, it will not increase in power after he's defeated. By contrast, Jubithos's Wicked Strikes increase damage even after he has been defeated. An image of Jubithos appears. Behind all, behind half all living players and strikes them for 48,895 fire damage. This effect increases damage over time. Interesting. I don't think it actually increases damage over time, but definitely Mark of the Necromancer is there. So, uh... I haven't seen Wicked Strike as much, although that's probably because I haven't been targeted by it because I'm a tank. So anyway, the things that the tanks need to worry about. Mark of the Necromancer. Dia marks two random enemies with a sigil of the Necromancer in 
increasing shadow damage over time. When dispelled, this effect bounces to three random allies near the affected player. So this one just bounces all over the damn place. If you kill Dia first, by the time you get to the end of the raid, your whole raid is going to have Mark of the fucking Necromancer, so you really need to watch out for that. So, also, I believe Wicked Strike probably is in there, and uh, it's probably trouble, troublesome and problematic, so uh, use your marks. I've got my uh, off-tank, uh, my other tank here, probably main tank in this case, because I'm off-tanking Kia. He's set as my focus. As always, it's the smart thing to do in these types of uh, raids. Always do it, because more often than not, you need to tank switch. And uh, yeah, at this point, we've got Gurtog down, we're working on Jibithos, and then we're saving Dia for last, and I've got the uh, X and Skull bound to uh, a couple of extra keys on the side of my mouse here, so I'm doing my best to keep the bosses marked up here. And Jubithos is just going down, so we just DPS down uh, Dia here, and this was a pretty clean attempt. So next up, we will have Gilrog Deadeye, the man, the legend, the douchebag who's torturing Aranok. So we will get to him in just a few minutes' time. And then the dead shall rise. Next up, we have the man, Kilrog Deadeye. So, once again, I'm going to uh, start out with the LFR uh, difficulty guide over on icyveins.com. And uh, what I've noticed so far here is that Kilrog is torturing Aranok. You can, on the higher versions, actually DPS race uh, Kilrog down before Aranok actually gets too many uh, stacks of corruption. And if you do succeed in that, then uh, he will not just die and turn into bones. Instead, you actually get him as a follower, which is pretty damn cool. But uh, on LFR so far, he's just always died, which makes me sad, but it is what it is. So anyway, let's go through what they have to say about Kilrog on LFR difficulty, specifically what tanks need to worry about. So Kilrog Deadeye is a single phase encounter during which the raid must deal with a number of adds as well as a special phase. Okay, this guide is short, it will provide you with all the information you need to see succeed in the Looking for Raid version of the fight, and the tasks that'll need to be done by your tanks, healers, and DPS. And I will be going into their detailed guide to uh, let you guys know what uh, you'll have to deal with uh, in terms of normal as well, because this list is really damn short. So anyway, tanks! Use active mitigation when Kilrog casts Shred Armor and perform a tank switch when uh, the hulking terrors spell corruption reaches uncomfortable levels. Uh, I guess I'll go into the healers too, because that's it for tanks. Uh, one healer should uh, enter the death ground and stand in one of the uh, three circles created by uh, Kilrog's vision of death. I don't think they ever friggin' do that. I think we just kind of eat the visions of death. Is what it seems like to me. I feel like we take extra damage after uh, here. And uh, melee and ranged. Kill all the adds that appear. Two DPS players should enter the uh, Death Realm, standing in one of the three circles created by Killrogs of Death. Keep running until for the duration of Death Throws. Okay, well, anyway, let's 
hop along in here. Uh, let's take a look at the more detailed guide now that we actually uh, have things started up here. So, let's go ahead and get started. This other guide here covers normal, heroic, and mythic. I'm mostly going to go over the normal heroic here. So, what you have to do if you're doing something greater than LFR. Well, first off, one tank needs to deal with Killrog. As I said before, the other tank needs to deal with the Hulk Terror. You want to try to keep the Hulking Terrors away from the raid due to Savage Strikes, so it's a cleave ability. Uh, I guess it's either the damage is, in, is negligible or it simply does not cleave on LFR difficulty because this is easy mode, after all. Uh, you want to uh, perform a tank switch once it's when, uh, when stack of threaded armor has reached a normal difficulty. In LFR, you just suck it up and you deal with it. Keep in mind, with good mitigation, this should never happen. So, basically, you shouldn't be getting the uh, stacks of shredded armor, which I think I do anyway because I fail. In fact, there is the debuff right there. Alright, and let's continue down the list here on the Tailed Guy. Alright, and everybody on... Uh, the uh, normal and above difficulties. Run far away from Killrog when targeted by Heartseek to place blood globules as far away from uh, the uh, boss as possible. Avoid standing in death throes by constantly running when it is being cast, so that is for the vision of death. Stand far away from Killrog when he casts death throes. Oh, actually, no, that's not. That's uh, later on. Uh, is when he just does this cleaving spinny attack. Interrupt the Hulking Terror's rending howl. That definitely does not happen at that LFR difficulty, from what I can see. Never reach a hundred fell corruption. If you are within the death realm, interrupt Hellblazing Imps. Avoid standing in front of the Hellblaze Mistress. Stand at a distance from the Hellblazed Fiends. And when they die, avoid standing in the void zones they leave behind. And finally, on Mythic Difficulty, sure, why not? We've got lots of time. Players with low Fell Corruption must suck, must soak the Fell Puddle Void Zone left by the Hulking Terrors before Death Throws is cast. Very interesting. So, some very challenging things. And uh, in Mythic, it sounds like you have to really manage that uh, Fell Corruption there. But anyway, let's go over Killrog's abilities here. Let's get it to a bit more details for uh, Shred Armor here. Shred Armor is an ability that Killrog regularly uses on his current tank. This ability applies the Shred Armor debuff. This ability stacks and increases the damage that the tank takes from all sources by 40%. This debuff is not applied to tanks who have an active mitigation cooldown. In effect, uh, at the time that Shred Armor is used, this ability requires a tank switch if a tank fails to use an active mitigation as they are affected by it. Okay, so. Yeah, use your active mitigation. Which, uh, for Paladins at least, I believe, uh, Divine Protection will uh, cover that. Uh, also, uh, I think even the uh, shield. Shield of the Righteous uh, should cover that, I believe it's what it's called. Blood Spatter is a void zone that deals moderate shadow damage every uh, second to two players standing in. However, Blood Splatters are extremely short-lived, as since as soon as they appear, they spawn Blood Globules or Fell Blood Globules and disappear after. Very good. The Blood Globules are adds with low health that can be crowd controlled but not tanked. As soon as they spawn, they move towards Killrog. If they reach him, the entire raid takes massive shadow damage. So even on LFR, you do want to deal with them. It's not as massive shadow damage, but you want to deal with it. Uh, fell Blood Globules spawn by players that are affected with Heartseek. Not on LFR, they act just like Blood Globules, but they deal more damage when they reach Killrog and they also heal him for 15% of maximum health. So that feels, that sounds pretty damn nasty. But fortunately, LFR, you don't gotta deal with that. All right, and next up we will look at the Death Throws, which he is doing right now. The crazy spinny attack. 
He occasionally uses it throughout the fight. He deals heavy fire damage to everyone in the raid for two seconds, with damage being lower the further away the raid is standing from Kilrog. Additionally, with each tick, the green area marked under each raid member, each green area is hit by a projectile a short while after appearing. This deals high fire damage to any players standing on the impacted zone. The rock also buffs himself with Death Store. Death Store is a stacking buff that increases Kilrog's damage done with death throws by 12%, making each consecutive death throws more difficult to survive. I'm pretty sure... Well, actually, I think he... Uh, I think I see that uh, debuff on here for uh, Alucard, so it does look like he has that too. Uh, Vision of Death is something that everyone always seems to ignore on LFR. Um, but yeah, what you're supposed to do is uh, three players, or at least I believe it's three players on uh, LFR. I think that's what I said earlier. It has one healer, two tanks. Or, yeah, no, that's a terrible idea. Do not do that. One healer, two DPS should uh, pop into the uh, Vision of Death uh, to avoid the rest of the raid taking nasty shadow damage. We'll avoid the Death Realm, because it's not concerned with the tank whatsoever. And yeah, basically, uh, it may not necessarily be your job, but uh, try anyway to uh, make sure that your uh, DPS is on task to uh, kill the Blood Globules, uh, slash Fell Blood Globules, and make sure that the Salivating Bloodthirsters uh, are taken down as quickly as possible. More often than not, they just land right in the uh, Fell Well, and they turn directly into those damn hulks. Uh, but yeah, those are uh, priority over Kill Rock. When uh, they pop out, when they... Uh, spawn and that is pretty much it. Kilrog is dead. So is Ariok, unfortunately. Poor, poor Ariok. But at least Kilrog is dead. And next up, we will be off to Mr. Terran Gorfiend, or Gorfiend as he is called here. And uh, he has a fun little fight. We'll get to him right in a minute here. Alright, and next up, we have Terran War or Terran Gorfiend, or just Gorfiend as he is now called here. And I'm just showing you the trash before the fight, because something pretty cool happens. The oh! The uh, little mini-boss there just uh, goes and uh, her soul gets eaten by Terran Gorfiend's tummy. So, let's get started with this particular boss here. So I'm once again going to show you the LFR version here. This is uh, take number two on this particular thing. I've been trying to do these in one take just because it's time consuming and uh, hopefully it's uh, more entertaining that way. But anyway, uh, Windows Movie Editor is being a bit of a twat. So we are going for take number two here. And once again, the LFR version of the guy, the uh, Super Coles Note version, what tanks need to deal with here. Uh, let's get us started here. So, first off, the Heart of Corruption. We're already in it. That's great. Pick up and tank and Rage Spirits at 70% health. It will disappear. At this time, you should uh, also leave the Heart of Corruption running to the pillar located in the center. I did not know that, and I stayed in there for most of the time. In the main room, go ahead and grab that damn spirit. That grab the Gorbound spirit and switch tanks when Fell Flames gets to too many stacks. I didn't know that whatsoever, and I've ignored the Gorbound Spirit and let it smack around the raid, and that one guy who died is probably my fault here. I believe I actually die later on because I'm not... I end up tanking both of the damn things. So, anyways here, let's go over the overview of this particular fight here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this page only has the tasks that you must complete in order to defeat the encounter. They uh, don't go into the details, because in LFR difficulty, the other mechanics are just merely problematic. I will get much more in-depth here. I'm going to the normal version of the fight in just a second. And I will also cover melee and range DPS here as well. So, melee and range DPS on LFR version of the fight once again. 
uh, move out of the raid when affected by uh, Touch of Doom in order to drop your Void Zone somewhere uh, that's not in the middle of the raid. Seems to make sense. And leave the um, Heart of Corruption before the 40 seconds uh, have passed. And when he is doing this right now, Feast of Souls, drop your cooldowns, hit him like you mean it, save all your DPS for Feast of Souls, because you will do 100% more damage to him. So you definitely want to uh, do as much damage as you can here. So uh, save Bloodlust, Time Warp, uh, Heroism for uh, Feast of Souls, and then hit him like you mean it. And that pretty much does it here. Uh, Range DPS need to uh, run away when... Uh, affected by, when targeted rather, by Hunger for Life. So that covers it for that guide. We are going to go ahead and we are going to uh, pop into the normal heroic and mythic one here. And Firefox has been really, really laggy with the Icy Veins website here. One thing I would suggest for Icy Veins is please don't have two damn videos running at the same time here as ads. I think that's really laggy, things down like crazy. Uh, but anyway, that is just me dissing the site I'm getting my information from. Icy Veins is an amazing resource. Please don't uh, take that the wrong way. It's just that Firefox is frozen a few times here. So we are back inside the uh, Heart of Corruption here. And uh, let's go into the details of that. So inside the Heart of Corruption, there are uh, several ads. So one of them, the skeletons, you're gonna wanna make sure they are not tankable. You want to DPS them down as quickly as possible. For those guys right there, I should have left right now uh, when you saw that Gorebound Construct, uh, or whatever it's called there, the Berserker. You want to make sure that he is out as quick as you can, um, or you want to get to him as quick as you can and uh, tank him in the real world. And uh, these little spirits right here that uh, the healers are trying to heal, you want to get those up to 100%, but if you don't, don't worry because... Uh, they will spawn as those uh, giant nasty-ass berserkers in the real world. However, they will have a fraction... They will have the other percentage of health in terms of what you healed. So, if you heal them up to 100%, they don't spawn, period. If you healed them to 85%, then they will have 15% health. If you healed them to 90%, they'll have 10% health. Uh, so, along those lines. So, pretty cool little idea there. Nice for... Uh, Z healers to uh, contribute inside them. And let's go into the main room section here. Let's actually just scroll down to the everyone section here. So I believe at some point I do get knocked out. I do get affected by a void zone. I get knocked out. I may have already died here and I was just looking at uh, icy veins while I was doing it here. Um, so yeah, basically you want to be tanking those guys. It doesn't look like you take any sort of uh, nasty... Uh, doesn't look like you take any sort of nasty debuffs for tanking Terrangor for too long, except that he will draw you into his maw. And I believe if you go in there again, you may die. Uh, like, I think there's a limit, but I tanked him the uh, entire fight pretty much here, except when I was not in uh, his tummy. So that didn't work out to be uh, really all that much of a problem. And, uh, yeah, I think this pretty much mostly covers everything that tanks need to uh, deal with here. And, uh, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, there is more information for sure. Please check out the guide on uh, icveins.com for normal, heroic, and mythic. But this video is about LFR version, and I think we've pretty much covered uh, definitely everything the tanks need to know, and certainly a lot of stuff the DPS needs to know. Absolutely nothing of what the healers need to know, which, sorry healers, but this guide is, uh, or this video is uh, designed specifically for uh, the tanks, really, to uh, help deal with the anxiety of tanking these uh, places, because the possibility for failure is there. It's It gets less every week uh, once people learn the fights. The fights are extremely forgiving on LFR difficulty, but there's still definitely a possibility for failure. I've actually wiped uh, as DPS before this, I wiped on the uh, Hellfire Council there, and I also wiped on uh, Killrog, because we didn't know the kill order on the Hellfire Council, and we uh, just didn't know the mechanics on Killrog, and I'm sure if I'd gotten to Terran Gore Fiend, we probably would have had problems too, like with those Gorebound Constructs, just wreaking havoc on the entire raid. So, 
definitely refreshing to have uh, lethal uh, to have uh, fights that we can die to. I mean, technically we died to uh, the Iron Reaver, or at least I died to that as uh, DPS before as well. But uh, yeah, so that does it about for uh, me guys on this particular fight. I've done Wing 3, it continues to be uh, pretty awesome, definitely better than Wing 1. Uh, and we will get to that uh, within the next week or so. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at YBotPower. Thank you for watching, I will see you next time.